All right, guys, Boy 32 here. Check it out. So we're coming at you live from the uh, review table. And on the review table, we've got uh, one of my uh, AR-15 pistols, affectionately known as the Wheel to Beast. Now, this thing is bad to the bone. One of the things I wanted to do was go with an economical platform on the upper. We're using a ballistic advantage. This is their 12 and a half inch uh, military profile or whatever. I can't remember what the profile. Anyway, it's 12 and a half inch with a low profile gas block. We're not using an adjustable gas block on this thing. Because one is, uh, I'm probably never going to suppress this guy. And because of that, we don't need to worry about an adjustable gas block. But one of the things that I'm experiencing is, uh, is I think it's a little bit overgassed. What is happening is, with the existing buffer that's in here right now, it is shooting out to uh, about the 2 o'clock position. Now, I believe this is a regular... H buffer, which is a standard buffer. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to go ahead and sit down and go through testing of an H buffer, H2 buffer, and H3 buffer. Now these guys right here are from, I believe, the Luth AR family. And I uh, bought these off of Big Daddy Unlimited. Oh yeah. Uh, if you go to my website, uh, and I can't even say it, I don't think. But, uh, right now, if you're in the mood to build a bunch of AR-15s, uh, they $9.99 a month and you're gonna get that money back on your first order pretty much for the whole year so anyway we got this guy right here uh, let's see what this bad boy weighs hope you guys can see that it should be three 3.1 ounces which is what 3.8 so yeah man so this is really really light so we're going to try a H1 buffer, which is H. Then we're going to go to an H2 buffer, which is 4.6 ounces. And then an H3 buffer, which is 5.5 ounces. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this thing out. We're going to go ahead and shoot it with the buffer that was in there. And this is either uh, one of the ones that just came in the kit that was with it. And then we're going to try it with each one of those things to see what happens to the uh dispersion or the ejection of our brass to bring this thing into a more manageable uh ejection pattern or at least where i think it's operating the way i want it to operate i don't care personally if it goes out and it operates one after the other i'm good to go but in any case uh this is it we got the law tactical right here i actually forgot to tighten up my damn uh castle nut right here but what we'll do let's go ahead and put this regular guy back in here and we'll take it out to the range and shoot it and see how it works. And then the cool part about it is you guys will see a practical experience, not just explaining what will happen, but the practicality and seeing what we will do when we change these things out with the ejection pattern. Let's get on out there and see how it goes. Stand by. <laughs> All right, so we're sitting out here at the range. Uh, one of the things we want to do is a progressive change out for the buffers on this thing. I want to show you guys literally what the changes are. A lot of people have asked about the buffers. Should have put an H1, H2, H3 buffer. So what we did earlier on the bench is we went ahead and weighed these guys. So let's go ahead and do this. This is with that original buffer. I want you guys to watch where these shell casings go. Here we go. Pretty much straight like that. So let's do this. We'll go ahead and clear the firearm. All right, so the firearm's cleared. What we're going to do, lock that thing to the rear. We're going to go ahead and change out that buffer to the H1 buffer. Stand by. I'll tell you what, having the uh, law folder on this thing makes it real easy to change out that buffer. Okay, so now what we want to do, if you'll remember, those cases were going straight out obviously means we're overgassed. So let's go ahead, see what this one is. Here we go. Almost the same thing. So let's go ahead and uh, clear the weapon. Uh, there we go. Let's slice our finger open and uh, change that buffer out to an H2. Stand by. All right, so now we got the H2 buffer in there. Let's go ahead and see where these guys should end up at. Here we go. Yeah. 
We're getting there. Well, they're still hitting about two o'clock, but they're not one o'clock. Yeah, I have a tendency to just really mess my stuff up. There we go. Uniform. Let's put the H3 in there and see what happens. All right, so now we've got the H3 in there. Let's go ahead and see how they go. I'm hoping it a little bit more towards you guys. <laughs> Here we are. Nope. It's a 100 yard target. Oh, I killed her. All right, well, <laughs> big difference, not really. Kind of disappointing, I thought there would be. Uh, maybe there's just so much gas coming off this thing that it may, you know what? I'm not even gonna be worried about it. Thing runs. I'm gonna leave that H3 buffer in there though, for sure. Can't see my target anymore. And it runs, I'm not worried about it. All right, so what do we learn? Uh, a little bit of angle change, not much. Uh, it was shooting out like that, now it's shooting out like that. Is it shooting out in the four o'clock position? No. That's it. We learn something every day. It's Code Boy 32. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless us men, women in uniform, 24 7 for our freedom. Man, I love shooting this thing. There it is. <laughs> it's free, it's not free. I'm out of here. Y'all be good.